Woodpecker, I'm selling my property. Ooh, you mean it? You're leaving? I'll help you pack. It's your nonsense I'm particularly sick of. You busting my roof, destroying my lawn. I'm through with it all, I tell ya. So long. Don't forget to write. Miss Meanie, I would want to buy this lovely property of yours, yeah, sure. Do tell me more, walrus. And I would yop down this tree. Oh, wait, Wally, not my tree. Right up an offer, Mr. Walrus. You buy this place and you can do anything you want with that tree. Meantime, I'm trying out the very exclusive, very modern Mondo Condos across town. And if all goes well, I'll be signing on their dotted line tomorrow. <laughs> no more homeowner headaches and no more woodpecker. That's right, no more woodpecker. Mm, mm, mm. But you can't kick me out into the cruel, cruel world like this. What'll become of me? Where'll I go? You'll get off my windshield, for starters, woodpecker. <laughs> I'm going to have to show her the grass is greener on this side of the fence. <laughs> You'll be staying the weekend in our luxurious sample unit, Ms. Meany. I tell you, dearie, a Mondo condo very nearly takes care of itself. Hot diggity! And I hope we'll find that you're Mondo condo kind of people, if you catch my meaning. <laughs> Now, let's see what this modern condo living is all about. Please step away from the Easy Pal 9000. Step away from the system. <gasps> oh, my! The automated settings have been preset to maximize your living ease. Well, isn't this convenient? Step onto the automated floor covering. The Easy Pal 9000 will escort you into the home of the future. Oh. Whoa! Oh, Miss Needy, darling, did we hear some noise? Ah! Uh, be right with you! Land sakes! Ah! We just wanted to remind you about our little poolside social. Oh, are you kidding? I wouldn't dream of wearing this old thing, not in a million! <laughs> And, and tell you what, why don't I whip up a little snacky treat for the little eat and greet? Phew. I'll bet my automated kitchen can help me pull something together and I'll automatically be in with the in crowd. <laughs> automatically. That's a good one. I'll make my famous turkey souffle. <laughs> Your turkey is done. Holy smoking turkey! <laughs> what now? <laughs> oh. One more modern convenience and Mimi will beg to go back home. <laughs> oh, my soaking lumbar. <sighs> ah, time to relax. Just lie back and allow the Mondo Condo's fully automatic massage chair to work its magic. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Meanie, there's something we should...
should discuss. <laughs> Why, I never. <laughs> At Mondo Condo, Ms. Meanie. So, Toodaloo, feel free to come back and visit. Uh, never. Now, you listen to me, Mr. and Mrs. Snooty Pants. <gasps> Who would stand for this nerve wracking, hooty tooty automated living you think is so modern? Certainly not me. That's who. So, Toodaloo, to you. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? Uh, but, well, 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 I'm um, just coming to check the place out. Uh, with you selling my, my tree house, I, I gotta live somewhere, you know. Ah! Forget it, Woody. <laughs> I wouldn't even let you live here. <laughs> oh, that's music to my ears, Woodpecker. <laughs> Hand over the cow juice, milkmaid. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mr. Alias. You get him, Mr. Alias. <laughs> Mr. Alias, man of adventure, triumphs again. Who among you is ready to join me in my life of adventure? Me, me, me. I've made all the arrangements. I've, I've notified, notified the authorities, the authorities pulled, pulled the strings, strings and greased the palms, palms all, all to create, create an, adventure an adventure for me! you. Just send $100 for your very own adventure in a box. But I already did. Well, if, if you, you already, already did, did then, then what's your mailbox? mailbox because adventure awaits. <laughs> Package from Mr. Alias, too large for home delivery. Please pick up at the Oversight Delivery Office. Oh, boy! Let the adventure begin! Yes, sir, Baba Link! My adventure in a box! <laughs> nice haircut. Ahem. Regulation 47K, subsection 8, clearly states... No customers on the counter! <laughs> Lady, I just want my package. <sighs> the rules are the rules, Woodpecker. I don't make them, I just carry them out. There are rules to be followed! <laughs> Wasting stamps! That's another rule you've broken! <laughs> Say, aren't you employee of the month? Oh, aren't you sweet? Let's see if we can get that package for you. Claim slip? I, uh, have... Ah, uh, phooey. I seem to have misplaced it. Company rules are very specific about missing claim slips. Oh, my. Rule 84, paragraph G, states that customers without claim slips must take a number and wait in line until an official of the company, that would be me, calls his number and verifies his identity. And then there's rule 48K. No touching the Book. Now take a number and wait like everybody else. Oh, boy. Number one. Number two. Anyone? Number three. Right here, number three. Now can I get my box? Yes. 
Yes. See how well everything works when we follow the rules? Now, you may wait in the package line. must be stacked at all times. Direct violation of code 525Z. Trespassing behind my counter! Finger here and help me tie this knot. Later. <laughs> no scoff law is going to break procedure on my watch. Oh, yeah? Watch me. Woodpecker? Wow! I can't wait to begin my adventure. Come out! Or I'll have so much junk mail delivered to your house it'll look like a paper recycling plant! A Navy officer's uniform. Oh, Woodpecker! I'm coming! But first, I know just what Mr. Alias would do in this situation. Oh, woodpecker! Come on out! I won't hurt you! Hmm? Oh, delivery master general! What are you doing here? A spot inspection? Regulation 39B clearly states employees are to follow orders from their superiors at all times. Yes, sir, Delivery Master General. Now get behind that red line until I tell you to move. On your mark, get set, pack that box, yes. sort that mail, count those stamps, stack that tape, answer that phone, file those invoices. Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right with you. This time, nothing can go wrong. Okay, here we go with another cartoon. For the morning, till you told me bye. And the top of the morning, woodpecker. Why, you big.
Mr. Woodpecker impersonation an officer, eh? <laughs> From limb. Hold on there. Where's your ticket, Sonny? I'm an officer of the law. You run along before I call a cop. Beat it, Junior, and take off that drink mustache. <laughs> boy, oh boy, what a perfect day. Today's the day I take an incredible expedition into the great outdoors. I'll forage every stream, climb every mountain. <sighs> I'll boldly go where no woodpecker has gone before. <laughs> okay, that's far enough. Boss, look! A house! <laughs> All houses got food in them! Forget about it. We're going dead. You see, Grant, picnics are better than just food. They're an ant's Shangri-La. Is Shangri-La French for food? Ah! Move out! the orange, Grant. Take the orange. Hey! Do 
de do de do de do Hey, what's the big idea spraying me with your hose? I didn't spray you, Woodpecker. But if you keep bothering me, I will. By Yingo. uses a leaf blower in the house, Anthony. Hey, quit your squawking. You're surrounded by food, aren't you? <laughs> Say, what are you doing with my grub, bub? Don't mind us, woodpecker. We got an eating disorder. As in, disorder is to go. <laughs> Detector will take care of anything that moves. So, you've had enough, have you? Greetings. We offer you this peace, of, uh, peace offering in an attempt to form a trace. Truce with your tallness and big-footedness. Truce, huh? I thought you guys would come around. Now beat it so I can enjoy my day. Food, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> trying to have a nice picnic over here. Keep it down. Nice picnic? Nice picnic? Oh, yeah. A nice picnic. I know just what you mean. Being severe and you crazy woodpecker. You think he's stopping? I don't know. Let's take a look. Ready? <gasps> Anthony, look! Shangri-La! So long! See you later! Nice doing business with you! If you can't beat them, send them to your neighbor! No! Lance! No! Get away! 
Mr. and Mrs. Snoot in the Sky. I hope your year-long ski holiday with the King of Sweden was the cat's meow. <laughs> Passport, please. Oh, lovely to have you back from Avenue C, Main Street, and... Hey, this is a bus pass. You've only been across town. Yeah, but I've been way across town. Only the ultra-rich and famous are allowed in Miss Ida Lux's European spa. We don't think you fit in with the rich and famous woodpecker. <laughs> oh, Miss Lux, my boss has a ribbon. <laughs> well, well, if it isn't Woodpecker's best friend. Come to Papa. My, don't you look beatifically today. Whatever. And how is the little Fifu doing? <laughs> Fifu, don't bite the doorman. He could have rabies. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Push the urn. <laughs> Fifu, darling, what are you doing? This will come out of your salary. Now get back to work. Don't you just love it when the underdog wins? Rest and relaxation, here I come. Ah, just what I need, a relaxing massage. Uh-oh. <sighs> now where is that walking feather bed? You see a woodpecker about this high and this wise? A woodpecker? Uh, no, I didn't see. Uh, but, oh, yeah, I know a stiff neck when I am seeing one. Uh, you bet. <laughs> yeah, just as I thought. You're all tied in knots. Um, yeah, but except... Just close your eyes. First, a scalp massage. <laughs> <Sweetie>, you're free. <laughs> now just relax. <laughs> I can see every single muscle group working together like a fishing crew in a fjord. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You'll be coming back again soon. <laughs> Mommy will be right back. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Who is responsible for this? You buffoon! What have you been doing all day? Taking balance lessons from Humpty Dumpty? <sighs> Mudliness is next to cleanliness, I always say. Hmm? Got you, woodpecker! <laughs> Got mud? Find a disguise to convince that doorman that I'm not here. Excuse me, have you seen a woodpecker in these vicinities? 
Why, no. I have always relied on the kindness of trainers. <gasps> that disguise won't work. Forget the disguises. This'll work. Got you now. <laughs> what better? <laughs> Papaya facial massage. <laughs> La 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 Oops. Ah ah ah! I'm not done with you yet. Not bad, but it needs a bake job. Excuse me, but have you seen my so-called doorman? Oh, you poor dear. Good help is so hard to find these days, isn't it? You can say that again. He completely destroyed my expensive urn collection. Not to fret, Miss Lux. I just returned from Valley Valley, and I would love to present this splendid little gift to you as a token of my appreciation for keeping the riffraff out of our spa. Mr. Woodpecker, you have wonderful taste. You must come with us next month to St. Tropez and then on to Monte Carlo. The figs and mud there are beyond compare. Oh, Woody, be a dear and get Fifu. Then hurry and join us in the limo. Woo-wee! Monte Carlo, limos. You heard what she said. I'm in the money now. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a turtle named Herman. Now, Herman wasn't an ordinary turtle. He had ambition. Ambition to fly, that is. So Herman wants to fly like the boy. Ha, ha, ha. All I have to do is like this. Well, Shorty, still trying to make like a boydy, eh? Now run along and uh, keep your feet on the ground. Why don't you give up? You'll never fly. You ain't got no feathers. <laughs> feathers, eh? Feathers?
eagle. You could teach me to fly. Will you show me how? Will you, huh? If you'll take me up, I'll, I'll give you treasures and jewels I found in the sea. Treasures and jewels? How much? Hmm. I'll get more. Let's go, Bob. Is this high enough? No, higher. Uh uh. No tricks now. me fly now. No! Here I go. And that, folks, is the end of our story. And the end of Herman. Wait. I can fly, I can fly. I can fly, I can fly. I can fly, I can fly. It's time for cartoon. Singing out there. It's called the legend of Rockabye Point. This all started aboard my ship 20 years ago. Well, sir, we just made a big haul of bluefin tuna. Now, polar bears like fish, so do little penguins. The cradle will fall, and I will come, baby, cradle and all. Rock a baby on the tree top, Mr. Pinto's cradle will rock, and the double eight, the cradle will fall, and I will come, baby, cradle and all.
Rock me, baby, and sweet talk. We both cradle a rock. But about eight, cradle a fall down. Go, baby, cradle them all. <laughs> Rock me, baby, and sweet talk. We both cradle a rock. But about eight, cradle a fall down. Go, baby, cradle them all. My baby, you're a tree top, it's a bit bold, it's a bit rock, when you're a berry, it's a bit of a fall, and I will go baby, it's a little roll. Baby, you have a tree top, it's a bit bold, it's a cradle of rock, when you rip a wreath, it's a little fall, and I will go baby, cradle of all. Well, that's the story of Rockabye Point. And to this day, 20 years later, you can still hear him singing. Listen. And down we'll come, baby, and Sing it to me again, will you, Charlie? All righty. Oh, rock a my baby in a treetop. Once upon a time, deep in a forest, a noble lion stood. 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 Stood, you dope. He was the king of beasts. not the storm, nor the lightning flash. I can take it. Ah, mighty king of the jungle.
Give me that gun. Stick him up. Miss me. How to catch a mouse? How to catch a lion? And it's yet to snap. What are you gonna do? We hear a penguin behind enemy lines. <laughs> Am I going to eat you? No, oh, no, no, heaven forbid. For you see, I am a vegetarian polar bear. We have sworn off all meat, my potbelly chum and I. So, you being just such a meat product yourself, are in no danger of becoming hors d'oeuvre in this facility. Tut, tut, there will be no squabbling. It could alert the enemy. Then all the glorious food in that hut would not become mine. No potato pie to be made from the mounds of spazzerin. 
No delicious banana nut bread. And no way in without being minced to shish kebab cubes. <sighs> what? Oh. <coughs> you destroy my element of surprise. <laughs> How humiliating. Now you listen here, you. There will be no more of your willy minded duckiness. Is that clear? <laughs> solution. Now you listen here, you rooter beggar rubber, you you horseradish highwayman! I demand my fair share of the spoils. <gasps> oh dear, not again. <laughs> ah, once more into the breach. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. The thing 
things I must endure. Yes! Excuse me, I'm Winnie Woodpecker. Is this yours? Ah! My media monitor a satellite! Hmm. This is what protects Earth. This is bad! Wow! Is that a giant blue ice meteor hurtling towards Earth, Professor? Where? That doesn't... We're doomed! Ah! Earth is toast! I need a space crew! Perhaps I could... Oh! It couldn't hurt to just try this on. Ah, my crew person. But I just called. How did you get here so fast? Fax, email. Let's go. But, Professor, I'm I'll not... finish this toast. We've got to stop that media! <laughs> I'm breaking out in hives. Oh, this itches. Oh, this is not good. Bad, bad, bad. They need lotion. Ointment would be good. Uh... Get a grip, Professor. Now, there's three reasons why I can help. I'm a fast learner. I don't use up much oxygen. And I'm all you got, mister. So let's get to it. Uh, release me now. Yes, sir. No, no, I'm not... Oh! Oh! Professor, there's zero gravity! Must get the satellite out there fast! Winnie, energize my jetpack! Oh, this is my big opportunity to make one giant leap for all woodpeckers! <laughs> yes, who's there? Those kids today? Hurry! It's not... Okay, okay, maybe it's... Three! <laughs> the pressures! No! Magnetize the hull! It'll pull me back to the ship! Like that, Professor? <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Just a second, Professor! Minor snafu! Please stop that! Amateurs! Oh. 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 We must get this satellite back into orbit. Listen carefully! I'm all ears, Professor. Well, I mean, not literally. Of course, I have hands and feet, and some say a cute beak. Quiet! Now activate the robot arm! Activating the robot arm! Easy, easy. Easy, easy. It sure looks easy. What did I do to deserve this? Please, be gentle. Working in space is harder than I ever imagined, Professor. Oh, my goodness! What? I can't see. Help me with my helmet. It's the giant blue ice meteor! If it is, we need to stop it! Track the beam? No. Death ray? No. Get my helmet off! I've got everything under control, Professor. <laughs> Maybe not everything, everything. I wanted to be remembered as the one who saved the Earth. Now I'm the one who destroyed it with... with a giant ice 
chicken! Oh, you won't be remembered for that, Professor. It's a giant ice swan. Oh. We need something big, something powerful to destroy that star fowl. We may might. <laughs> Position. Azimuth, 30.1 at 12 degrees in Scorpio. That's it! What? Leaving? Where are you going? Like I always say, Professor, when in doubt, improvise! Okay, Professor, I've packed the dynamite onto the medium. Dynamite? What are you thinking? Just this! <laughs> A giant ice rubber! It won't help, Winnie. It's still on course. Only now for the other side of Earth! Yep, Professor. And right into the path of my beautiful red Winnie Mite! Professor Quark, could you tell our viewers how you managed to save Earth? Oh, well, I, uh, she, no, what, what did she say? What Professor Quark means is that together we fired these lasers at the ice meteor and... <laughs> Shut that thing off! This just in. I'm getting word the National Space Division has reported some unauthorized laser activity. It has knocked a red meteor onto a collision course with Earth. And this one's in the shape of a giant woodpecker. Come on, Professor. We've got work to do. What? Oh, hello? No! Space woodpeckers! Dangerous! It's... I'm breaking out in hives again! <laughs> <laughs> 